So when you hack into a, um, a, to a process control system, you need two things. First, you need the cyber payload, which is the set of exploits that you use to, to break into it and get to the digital assets that are going to control the system. The second set of things that you're going to need is the physics payload. And the physics payload are the set of instructions that the attacker feeds to the control system to accomplish his goals. And if one or the other of these two uh, fizzle, then the attacker still doesn't win. So you can have complete control of the system, but have a bad physics payload, and you don't get to win. So if you're in a chemical industry, and you've got a bunch of chemicals you're going to react together, then this is the place that they're supposed to react. You pump them into a big reaction vessel, and you mix them together, and you heat them up to the appropriate temperature and pressures and all those things, and things mostly go. <clears throat> but um, as a, a, an attacker, when you're attacking these, the chances of you actually making things go wrong here aren't very high. That's because the engineer has already been through all this. He's put in pressure relief valves and birch disks, and there's a big catch basin in case it overflows, and he's got uh, a whole bunch of uh, PE ratings on this pressure vessel. So um, if you're not aware of that, if you build a pressure vessel, you've got to have a professional engineer actually stamp the side of it, and if the pressure vessel blows up, then the PE can go to jail. And so he's super motivated to design this so it won't uh, fail catastrophically. But we bolt onto this very, very safe thing, a whole bunch of very unsafe things. So we've got tank farms, uh, pipes, pumps, valves, all these things. And all this stuff we bolt into it is under um, attacker control or under uh, digital control. So the chemical reaction that's supposed to be happening here could happen someplace else, like over in a cracking column or a recirculation uh, pump system or you know, any place like that. The problem that the attacker has is that if he wants this chemical reaction to happen someplace else, someplace unsafe, he has to recreate all of the conditions, the pressures, the temperatures, the whatever else. So he's got to scavenge something else from the process to try and make this happen. And if you look at actually the failure data for a lot of these places, you can see these things happen. It's like, oh, well, this chemical leaked over into the recycling pump, and the recycling pump uh, started the reaction, and then things went bad. So if you uh, do anything with a large amounts of water, then uh, um, if your control system asks the water to stop suddenly and it can't, then bad things happen. So these are all pictures of uh, places where the control system said, hey, water, just stop right now. And then the water said, eh, not going to stop, and then bad things happened. So um, pressure transients are the basis for most attacks on piping infrastructure. Um, so like here, this is a, a presentation I gave earlier, you can read more about it, where you have a valve and you basically bun, uh, bounce a pressure wave back and forth between the valve and someplace else, and the pressure wave gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you bounce it back and forth. This is what's known as a, dram, a gravity hammer or a steam void collapse, where we can push a bunch of steam through the system into a tank that's higher, and then as the, the stuff, uh, um, uh, stuff falls, then things compress and bad things happen. Um, you can hit uh, check valves. Pushing a motor against a check valve is a great way to start generating a bunch of pressure transients. Um, so other, uh, 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 other types of attacks is a lot of times the states of things are meant to be all of one or all of the other. So in this case, let's say we've got uh, an aqueous system versus a system with gas in it. So one of the things that uh, you can do is take the system um, that's meant to be either full of air or full of water, and this is called a biface slug. This is where you fill the pipe halfway full of uh, water, and then as an attacker, you've got to figure out how to get the air moving through the pipe moving at a different speed than the water moving through the pipe. So what will happen is, as the air moves across the surface of the water, these ripples will form. The ripples get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually the ripple will come up, touch the top, top of the pipe. This will actually form a seal, and it shoots it through at high speeds through the system. And this can be really damaging to systems. So then as an attacker, you have to go like, where can I get a whole bunch of compressed air? Which the answer is usually um, pressure vessel with heating control and make it really, really hot, which increases the pressure. And then we, uh, uh, we push the air down through it. So um, also, pressure vessels um, and the places we expect things to go bad um, are super hard and usually can take a full vacuum. But everything else we pump, uh, plug into them um, don't react well when things drop below zero. So these are all pictures of things where, um, uh, where a control system has pulled a vacuum on the system. And so these the vessels can take lots and lots of positive pressure, but can't take very much negative pressure. So we'll hit one from electric power just because it's different than everything else. So three phase attacks. 
So you've got uh, a nice three-phase system, and, and the sine waves are going. And if you take another three-phase system and you close them in really fast, um, then, uh, then they're going to be accelerated towards each other. So this was the famous uh, um, Aurora attack of 2007, where they spun up a generator, kicked it off, brought it back in out of phase, and then bounced the generator back up and down off the floor until it, until it broke. And there's lots of other systems that can uh, um, happen as three-phase system. You have islanding, you have a whole bunch of other things, um, uh, backup generators when they come back in. If you can defeat the, uh, um, defeat the, the little mechanisms in there that trip out if you try to close them out of phase, all those things happen in electric power. Thank you.